this video, what we're going to discuss is co-warranto and that is your Rule 66 and this is already the part 2 of our discussion. So, ano na ang natapos natin? We finished discussing the difference between co-warranto under the rules of court from co-warranto under the election code. But I want you to remember section 253. Section 253, dapat ma-memorize nyo or not really memorized but dapat maalala nyo Kasi it will come handy when you go to your political law, that would be an answer to any question under the election law. And when you go to your remedial law, mas madali na yan i-distinguished from co-waranto under the rules of court. Your co-waranto under section 253 of the, of the election code answers what, when, where, and who. So who can file an action for co-waranto? Any voter, you distinguish that from co-waranto under the rules of court, that is the government through the soldier or public prosecutor or an individual. And where can you file, when, and what are the grounds? Next, ano pa ang natapos natin? Tapos na natin i-discuss when can the government commence an action against individuals or associations. And section 2 and section 3 of rule 66 has the answer. Just remember, your Section 2 is a mandatory co-waranto proceeding and your Section 3 is a discretionary co-waranto proceeding. What else did we finish? We finished also answering when can an individual commence an action for co-waranto. Section 5 has the answer and qualification for an individual to file an action for co-waranto is he must be claiming that he is entitled to a public office or possession and that public office or possession is unlawfully held or exercised by another person and I relate nyo na agad si section 6 because section 6 requires that the name of the person who claims that he is the one entitled to the office that he is an asserting his right to the office and the name of the respondent who is unlawfully in possession thereof. So in this video, tapusin na natin what is the judgment in co-waranto action, what are the rights of a person if he is the, a judge as to be the person entitled to public office and what are the limitations. And relate natin dyan ang case ng, the case filed against Chief Justice Sereno. Next topic is judgment in co-waranto action. Section 9 has the answer. So, what is the judgment when the respondent is found guilty of intruding or unlawfully holding a public office, position, or franchise? The court is obliged to render the following judgment. Number 1, that the respondent shall be ousted and altogether excluded therefrom. This is what happened to Chief Justice Sereno and that the petitioner or the relator may recover his cost and number three such further judgment may be rendered determining the respective rights in and to the public office position or franchise of all the parties to the action as justice requires so this is in according or this is uh, your section 9 of rule 66 Take note, however, I recall natin that if the action is filed by the soldier or public prosecutor, then you do not need an individual who is claiming to be entitled to the office. But even if there is no individual, still the, duty, the court has the duty to pass upon the right of the defendant only. But if it is an action for co-waranto filed by an individual, that individual has the burden. He has the burden to prove his right to the office in dispute. Otherwise, what will happen? The court shall not pass on the right of the defendant in the office. Bakit? Ano ang sinabi that ng Supreme Court? Because that holder of the contested uh, position has a right to the undisturbed possession thereof. Again, it is not even necessary to pass upon the right of the defendant because according to the Supreme Court, by virtue of his appointment, he continues in the undisturbed possession of his office. So please take note of that.
Next, what are the rights of a person if he is a judge entitled to public office? Section 10 has the answer. Ano ang sinasabi ng Section 10? After taking the oath of office and executing any official band as required by law, that person may take upon himself the execution of the office and he can also demand from the respondent all the books and papers in the respondent's control or custody pertaining to the office to which the judgment relates. And if that respondent refuses or neglects to deliver any book or paper, then he may be punished for contempt as having disobeyed a lawful order of the court. And that person, a judge entitled to the office, can also file an action against the respondent to recover the damages sustained by the person by reason of the usurpation. So please take note of section 10. We'll go now to limitations and section 11 has the answer. But what is the general general rule? General rule to ha, if you are going to file an action against a public officer or employee for his ouster, when should you uh, file the action or when should you commence the action? Answer is within one year. One year from when? One year from the cause of such ouster or from the right of that petitioner to hold such office or position arose. Paano ginastify ng Supreme Court ang one year uh, period or the one year limitation? Sabi ng Supreme Court in, in fact, ginamit nila to sa Republic versus Sereno. Sabi ng Supreme Court, we find this provision or we find Section 11 to be an expression of policy. Expression of policy on the part of the state that if you are a person claiming a right to an office, then you should immediately take steps to recover said office. And if you are not able to do so within the period of one year, then you shall be considered as having lost that right by abandonment. So meaning to say you are you abandoned your right over that office because you failed to file your case within the period of one year. Also, by reason of public policy and convenience, there must be stability in the service so that the public business may not be unduly retarded. Sabi din ng Supreme Court, hindi maganda or is it not it is not proper that the title to public office should be subjected to continued uncertainty. Further, the government must be immediately informed or advised if there is this person claiming to be entitled to a position because otherwise the government will be faced with that predicament. Ano yung predicament nila? That they will be paying two salaries, one for the person who is actually holding the office, although illegally, and another for that person who is not actually rendering service, although he is the one entitled to do so. So this is how the Supreme Court justified the one-year limitation. So again, ang general rule is you must file within one year. If you are going to file an action against a public office, officer for his ouster, then you must do it within one year, within one year from the cause. The reason for that, ang sabi nga ng Supreme Court, hindi maganda or it is not proper that the title to public office should be subjected to continued uncertainty. But ano palagi ang sinasabi ko pag may general rule, my exception. And what is that exception? co to proceedings if you want to oust a public office that is a government function. Therefore, if it is a government function, then the statute, the statute of limitation does not apply. So to discuss that exception, we'll go now to this case of Republic of the Philippines versus then Chief Justice Sereno. So this decision or this resolution was rendered on June 19, 2018. Take note, ha, June 19, 2018. Bakit ito ang sinight ko? Because um, Sereno here filed a motion for reconsideration. It is an ad cautela motion for reconsideration. Ad cautela means with caution. Uh, Sereno wants to 
wants the court to reconsider the decision that was rendered on May 11, 2018. Ano ang nakasaad doon sa May 11, 2018? The petition for co-waranto is granted. Sereno is found disqualified and hereby adjudged guilty of unlawfully holding or and exercising the office of the Chief Justice. And Sereno is ousted and excluded therefrom. Yang ousted and excluded therefrom, you take note that is your section 9, that is the judgment in co-waranto action. And the position of the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court is declared vacant and the JBC is directed to commence the application and the nomination process. The decision is immediately executory without need of further action from the court. So, ito yung pinapa-reconsider ni Chief Justice Sereno. But in this, um, in that June 19, 2018 resolution, ano ang sinabi ng court dyan? The motion for reconsideration is denied with finality for lack of merit, merit and no further pleadings shall be entertained. Let entry of judgment be made immediately. These were the arguments raised by Chief Justice, by then Chief Justice Sereno. Ni raised niya din to dun sa motion for reconsideration. So, according to the Chief Justice, uh, according to then Chief Justice Sereno, she argued that the Supreme Court has no jurisdiction to entertain the petition for co-waranto because she is an impeachable officer and the only procedure to remove her is through impeachment. Next, the respondent also contends that impeachment precludes co-waranto as a remedy against her due to her being an impeachable officer. And last is that the respondent insists that even if the pit even if the petition for co-waranto is the proper remedy to test her eligibility to the position of Chief Justice, the petition is already time-barred kasi dapat, if you are going to file your petition for co-waranto, it should be filed within the period of one year. So, ito ang i-discuss natin, ilinit natin ang ating discussion to these issues. There are many issues pa concerned but we will not be discussing them. So, diretso na tayo. Ano ang sinabi ng Supreme Court? Co-waranto and impeachment are two distinct proceedings. Although co-waranto and impeachment both results in the ouster of a public officer, but they are two distinct proceedings. Strictly speaking daw, co-waranto grants the relief of ouster while impeachment affords removal. So, pag pinag-uusapan si co-waranto, Please remember that that is the proper legal remedy if you want to determine the person's right or the person's title to a public office. And the purpose of co-waranto is you want to oust the holder from its enjoyment. It is the proper action, your co-waranto is the proper action if you want to inquire the public officer's eligibility or the validity of his appointment. And under Rule 66, your co-waranto that involves a judicial determination, that is a judicial determination of the right of a person to the use or exercise of the office. So, yan ang co-waranto. How about your impeachment? Impeachment is a political process. That is a political process undertaken by the legislature or the legislative department or the branch of the government to determine whether the public officer committed any of the impeachable offenses. So what are those impeachable offenses? Culpable violation, treason, bribery, graft and corruption, other high crimes or betrayal of public trust. And the impeachment, it does not ascertain the officer's eligibility for appointment or election or it does not challenge the legality of his assumption of office. Kasi nga, sa impeachment, ang dinedetermine mo talaga is whether that officer committed that impeachable offense. And if there is a conviction of, for any of the impeachable offenses, then it will result in the removal of that officer from office. If you read the concurring opinion of Justice Bersamin, ang sinabi niya doon that the remedies of co-waranto and impeachment are not mutually exclusive. They are not mutually exclusive because both have different natures, they have different grounds and different coverages. 
in fact, sinabi niya, if you are going to determine whether that public officer is eligible for public office and at the start, then impeachment is not the proper remedy to oust her. In the same way that if you are going to determine whether that public officer committed a misconduct while in the office, then your co warranto is also not the correct remedy to oust that public officer. Therefore, both co warranto and impeachment can stand independently of each other despite both remedies will achieve the same result. And what is that result? The result that it will remove the occupant from that public office. There, this is the reason why co warranto and impeachment impeachment do not exclude each other. So, ito din ang naging reasoning ng Supreme Court in removing from office din Chief Justice Sereno. Next issue, ano ang ni-raise ni Chief, then Chief Justice Sereno? Ang sabi niya that even if the petition for co warranto is the proper remedy to test her eligibility to the position of Chief Justice, the petition is already time barred. Bakit time barred? Because that petition for co warranto was not filed within one year from the cause. Ano ang sinabi ng government? The government through the soldier, ang sabi niya, the time bar of one year does not apply against the state. Bakit? Because the principle of that act of limitation do not, that because of that principle, that acts of limitation do not bind the state. Time does not run against the crown or the, it does not run against the state. So with both arguments, ano ang decision ng Supreme Court? The court made distinctions as to when such prescriptive period applies. So number one, if it is filed by the state at its own instance through the soldier, then the one-year period or the one-year prescription shall not apply. Second, if it is filed by the soldier or the public prosecutor at the request or upon relation of another person and then there is this permission for coming from the court or with leave of court, then prescription applies except when there is this jurisprudential exceptions that are present. Number three, if it is filed by an individual in his or her own name, then prescription applies Again, except if there is this established, jurisprudential exceptions are present. So, this is now the rule concerning that one-year limitation. So, you read the case of Republic versus Sereno, ha? kasi that is important. Ang discuss ko na lang dito yung mga applicable sa ating uh, topic. So, again, in that case, ano ang sinabi? impeachment and co warranto they have the same result and that result is the removal of a public officer however impeachment and co warranto are really different from each other based on their nature the purpose the function and grounds take note also that impeachment and co warranto they can proceed independently and simultaneously impeachment does not bar the court from taking cognizance of the office of the soldier's petition for co warranto brought against the respondent who is an impeachable official. The office of the soldier's petition for co warranto also is not time barred because prescription does not lie against the state. The time bar under the rules of court that is a limitation that applies only to private individuals challenging the title of an incumbent official. That time bar or that limitation, one year limitation, does not apply to the soldier who represents the public interest in pursuing the action. So before I end this video, I want you to read section 8. Bakit pinapabasa ko sa inyo si section 8? Because section 8 is kakaibang provision. If other provisions of the rules of court, they allow you to extend the filing or to extend the period. Here in section 8 under rule 66, the court is allowed to reduce the period. The court is allowed to reduce by the period provided by the rules for the filing of the pleadings and all other proceedings in the action. The, pur the purpose of that is you want to secure the most expeditious determinations of the matters involved under Rule 66. In fact, ang sinasabi pa nga is such action may be given more importance 
over any other civil matter pending in the court. So this is the end of our video, the end of our discussion. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.